I want to talk about this Frontline PBS video published just on November 4th, so just this week. It's titled Crime Scene Bucha, How Russian Soldiers Ran a Cleansing Operation in Ukraine. Now, we've all heard this claim that Russia mass murdered Ukrainian civilians in Bucha. This was allegedly between February and April of 2022. So this Frontline PBS report is coming out over half a year later. Surely they're, they're going to have huge amounts of irrefutable evidence that this took place. Only it doesn't. It doesn't, not even close, not even a single shred of evidence that Russia was deliberately killing any civilians. Instead, what it shows is Russians rounding up armed men who were fighting them in the area. It shows Russian soldiers escorting civilians through the area. And later they admit it was for them to get medical treatment or to go to shelters because the entire area was under Ukrainian artillery fire the whole time. And it focuses on three different incidents. A young man named Dima, who eventually they admit was involved in the armed fighting. A man named Ivan, who they at first inter introduced as a taxi driver, but then later admit he was, he was part of a group of nine men who were armed and fighting Russian forces. Uh, and then they show a video that they, they claim Ivan was in and it's nine of these men being led across a road by Russian forces. And that's the only video that they have. Then they show a photograph of eight men dead and they claim Ivan somehow survived. That's how he's here telling us about all of this. And, and not only that, after he escaped, Russians caught him again and they mistaken him for an injured civilian and they treated him. And that's why he's alive to tell the story today. That's interesting. They're carrying out a, a cleansing operation, yet they found him injured and treated him. A little contradictory. Anyway, they provide no evidence to even verify that these eight men in the photograph are the same men in the video clip of them crossing the road. And the way the narrator explains it is very odd. You would expect the narrator to refer to the bodies like this. The bodies of the other eight men were still lying on the ground next to the building where they would remain for weeks. But that's not how they worded it. They worded it this way. This is a very deliberate choice of words. The bodies of eight men were still lying on the ground next to the building where they would remain for weeks. Why would they do that? These are all native English speakers involved, writing the script, editing, editing it, recording it, and presenting it to the public. Why would they word it that way? They would word it that way because they're not sure that these eight men uh, in the photograph are the same nine men, well, same men in the video clip that they're trying to connect. They also don't prove that it was Russia who killed these men. They claim the bodies were there for weeks. When you look at the photograph, it's very clear that they were not there for weeks, not even close to weeks, days at best. And finally, they talk about Dima's grandfather. They're interviewing the grandmother who claims her husband was interrogated by Russians. She overheard her husband admitting that Dima was involved in the fighting, and then everything went silent. And then she found her husband with a bullet hole in his head and his body charred. So obviously something was omitted in this story that uh, Frontline PBS does not want to talk about because you cannot shoot someone in the head and burn their body in silence. It's physically impossible. There's no way that happened. There's obviously more to this story that they're deliberately omitting. What you will notice throughout the video, because there is no evidence, they depend heavily on slick 3D models and graphics and special effects because they want it to appear professional and convincing, even though there's no evidence to go along with their narrative. So they're clearly being dishonest. Why are they being dishonest? We know they're being dishonest. Why are they being dishonest? Well. You go to the video here on YouTube, and the first thing that should catch your eye is this. PBS is an American public broadcast service. Uh, an American public broadcast service means it's funded by the US government. And down here, it even says funding for Frontline is provided through the support of PBS viewers and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. You go to their website. CPB is a private nonprofit corporation authorized by Congress the Public Broadcasting Act of 1967. And you might say, well, Brian, maybe they're funded by the US government, but surely they're independent of, uh, you know, whatever the US government wants them to say. Well, check out the board of directors. 
This is the board of directors and it says, a board of directors governs CPB, sets policy and establishes funding priorities. CPB is the only public media organization whose board members are nominated by the president of the United States and confirmed by the US Senate. So case closed, uh, it is a reflection of whatever Washington's interests are, not, not the people in America paying for all of this through their tax dollars, the president and Congress. And because the United States is a direct participant of this ongoing conflict in Ukraine, clearly the US government would be interested in producing war propaganda to smear and undermine Russia's position. It's, it's as clear as day, it couldn't be more obvious. Uh, they worked with Associated Press. They also worked with Sit2 Research. Sit2 Research, uh, go to their website and under support, you see all of these corporate foundations, including convicted financial criminal George Soros' Open Society Foundation, but also the National Science Foundation. It's a .gov website. So that all right there already means this is yet another US government funded organization. And it says it's an independent federal agency created by Congress. So you have Frontline PBS and Sit2 Research, two organizations funded by the US government, putting this report together. Who else, who else is involved in this video? It's not in the video description, but if you watch the whole video, you will hear them talk about the Dossier Center in London. They don't explain what that is, but the reason they mentioned it was because they have these ridiculous, cartoonish, intercepted phone calls they claim Russia, Russian soldiers were making with claims like the commander told us to execute all civilians, no exceptions. And yet even Frontline PBS's own report contradicts that because they admit Russian soldiers were providing treatment and shelter for the civilian population. So these were obviously fabricated, intercepted communications. They admit it was provided to them by the Ukrainian security services. And they claim that the Dossier Center in London verified them. So what, what about this Dossier Center in London? Go to their website about the project. This is translated from Russian. And it says Dossier Center, a nonprofit project of Mikhail Kordakovsky. Kordakovsky, who is he? He's a corrupt Russian billionaire oligarch. He was convicted and sentenced to prison in Russia. And when he was released from prison, finally, he fled to the West, where he now wages a personal war against the Russian government who held him accountable for his corruption. We, we know that the Russian oligarchs during the 1990s, they were incredibly corrupt. Uh, he is not the first one who, who gained his fortune through, through honest ways. He was corrupt, he was robbing the country, he was selling it out, he was doing it in cooperation with the West. And that's not just the Russian government accusing him of that. That's even this, the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, which is funded by Western governments and Western corporate interests and, and promotes help shape and promote US foreign policy, but even they admit that Kordakovsky uh, was actually extremely corrupt. And just because he's going to side with you against Moscow now, doesn't mean you should overlook his corruption because it undermines your own credibility by doing so. The link to this article will be in the video description below. I highly recommend you read it just in case you think Mikhail Kordogovsky is the first Russian billionaire oligarch to honestly earn his fortune and that that's the reason why Putin put him in prison. Anyway, that's who helped frontline PBS verify these obviously fabricated Russian soldier conversations that Ukraine security services gave them to frame Russia. Now, if you were just an ordinary person and you stumbled across this Frontline PBS video, you wouldn't know any of this because you're not going to look in the video description. You don't have time to do the research. I'm doing the research for you so you can see how this entire video was put together by U.S. government funded media organizations in cooperation with co convicted criminals hiding in London, harbored in London, uh, and, and how this is about shaping war propaganda 
not investigating anything and not informing anyone of anything truthful. Now, the, the scariest part about all of this is that if hundreds of people did die in Bucha, and I think that there were hundreds of people who died, and Frontline PBS spent over half a year putting this together, or, or they at least had half, over half a year to put it together, and they couldn't find a single shred of evidence to implicate Russia in deliberately killing these civilians. Who did kill them? And by not seriously investigating it or not honestly investigating it, you're actually helping cover up whoever the real culprit was. Frontline PBS claims among the evidence they have, uh, you know, when making this video was security footage. And they do. They have a lot of security footage that they show you. They show the Russians coming in to Bucha in the beginning. They show them taking up their positions. They show them detaining armed men who were fighting them. Uh, they show them escorting civilians through the area with their belongings and even with their pets. They even have videos inside houses that, that had security cameras inside, and they showed Russians playing with lights, doing their laundry, and even chasing a dog. But among all of this footage Frontline PBS gathered, not a single video shows Russian soldiers deliberately executing Ukrainian civilians. Not a single video but you know what video footage we do have confirming arms men were killing people in exactly this way uh binding their arms behind their back uh people wearing white bands because if you watch this frontline pbs video they show they show the dead bodies with the white armbands and they never explain what that means but the white armbands are worn by russian forces and people working with russian soldiers they don't explain that conveniently. They leave that out. But we do have video evidence of armed men going around and killing people in precisely this manner. Ukrainian forces. This does not come from Russian media. This comes from the New York Times. So here's from the New York Times. This was from April 6, 2022. Video appears to show Ukrainian troops killing captured Russian soldiers. This is what the New York Times says. A video posted online and verified by the New York Times appears to show a group of Ukrainian soldiers killing captured Russian troops outside a village west of Kiev. He's still alive. Film these marauders. Look, he's still alive. He's gasping, a man says, as a Russian soldier with a jacket pulled over his head, apparently wounded, is still seen breathing. A soldier then shoots the man twice. After the man keeps moving, the soldier shoots him again, and he stops. At least three other apparent Russian soldiers, including one with an obvious head wound who has his hands tied behind his back, can be seen dead near the victim. All are wearing camouflage, and three have white armbands commonly worn by Russian troops. So here's the New York Times submitting, white armband means you're associated with Russia. Why would Russian troops kill people wearing white armbands. Clearly, they didn't. These are people who had obviously just been killed. They were killed by Ukrainian extremists moving in as Russian forces left, and they were rounding up and killing collaborators. It's, it's, it's as clear as day. This is what else the New York Times says. The video was filmed on a road just north of a village of the Mitrivka, around seven miles southwest of Bucha, where the discovery of hundreds of corpses of people in civilian clothes in recent days has prompted accusations that Russian troops killed civilians as they retreated. But of course, uh, these civilians killed in Bucha, many of them had the white armband, just like these soldiers that the New York Times is describing, killed by Ukrainian extremists. Uh, they were also wearing white armbands in Bucha. And again, they're going to deliberately not, not make the connection Frontline PBS deliberately omitted this fact that they had these white armbands. They never explained what they meant and what the implications were that these freshly killed civilians were wearing white armbands, identifying them as working with Russian troops. So that's New York Times explaining that uh, video footage of actual armed men killing people in precisely this manner. There is no footage of Russians doing this. There is footage of Ukrainians doing this. And it's covered by the New York Times. Frontline PBS never talks about these hundreds of civilians that were killed. They never talk about forensic evidence. 
discussing how they died. Were they were they all bound and shot? Were only some of them bound and shot and others killed in other ways? First of all, we have footage of Ukraine shelling Russian positions in Bucha. And I've showed this before. This footage is a little grainy, but you can see that this is a residential area. You can see there's military vehicles on the ground being shot at. If you look closely, you can see markings on them indicating that they're Russian vehicles. Uh, the big V painted on this vehicle, for example. And you can see how Ukrainian forces are simply shelling Bucha. Now, Ukrainian forces are clearly trying to hit Russian military targets in Bucha. Of course, they're not, they're not going to hit only Russian military targets in Bucha. They're also going to kill all of the civilians that are there. This is why Russia was trying to encourage them to go into shelters to protect them from this crossfire. It was a war. Uh, a lot of the hundreds of civilians that we heard about were killed in this crossfire. They were killed in artillery strikes. We even have articles like this from the Washington Post, however dishonest, indicating that a lot of these people were killed by artillery. This is from April 18th, 2022. Lethal darts were fired into the Ukrainian neighborhood by the thousands. And they're talking about Bucha right here, Bucha, Ukraine. And they're talking about these these artillery shells with these tiny darts in them being fired into Bucha when Russian forces were there. And they tried to infer that it was Russia doing the shelling, so shelling their own positions. The Washington Post will explain, these projectiles called flèches are rarely seen or used in modern conflict, experts have said. Many landed in the street in the strike including some observed by Washington Post reporters among fields of gear and the occasional liquor bottle or chocolate bar abandoned by retreating Russian soldiers. So there's impacts and these darts everywhere in and among equipment left behind by Russian forces. So they were being shelled and then eventually they withdrew from this area. This is what they're saying and yet they're still trying to infer that it was Russians who were doing the shelling. They don't want to admit that Ukraine was using these fliché rounds, which are also considered cluster munitions. They're indiscriminate. And that it was Ukrainian shelling that killed most of these civilians that now the Western media is trying to claim Russia killed. Now, I want you to look at this article, this Washington Post article. Look at this picture in the Washington Post article. And then look at this picture right here. This is from AFP. Surgeons in Ukraine's rebel Donetsk confirm cluster bomb usage. This is from 2014. This is from 2014. Okay, so Ukraine had been firing these at civilians in Donetsk, and then they were firing them into Bucha outside of Kiev in 2022. This is what the AFP article from 2014 says. Surgeons in East Ukraine's rebel hub of Donetsk, where dozens of civilians have died in recent weeks, confirmed on Tuesday that some patients were victims of cluster bombs, as alleged by Human Rights Watch. So this isn't just the rebels saying this or, or doctors in rebel-held areas. This is also acknowledged by Human Rights Watch. Although Kiev vehemently denied that its troops battling the pro-Russian insurgency in the East are using the controversial and indiscriminate cluster munitions, medics claimed Ukrainian forces were at fault. So every actual shred of evidence that we look at here suggests that most of these civilians were killed in crossfire. I don't believe that it was Ukrainian forces deliberately trying to kill their own civilians when they were shelling Bucha, but by shelling Bucha, they did kill hundreds of civilians. Then when Russian forces withdrew, anyone considered a collaborator was clearly rounded up and executed. They had their arms bound behind their back, many of them wearing white armbands, and they were shot. They were tortured beforehand, their bodies mutilated afterwards, exactly as the New York Times described Ukrainians killing Russian soldiers that they captured right down the road from Bucha. Now, this is not conclusive evidence, but it's much more compelling than anything presented by Frontline PBS. As a matter of fact, if you watch the Frontline PBS video carefully, you'll notice that they don't actually really get into how all of these civilians died. 
two out of three of the incidents that uh, Frontline PBS actually looked into involved men who were armed and were fighting Russian forces. Now, the best that Frontline PBS can do is suggest that, yes, Russia captured those nine armed men and then executed prisoners of war, which is certainly a war crime and inexcusable. And those responsible should be held accountable. But that is not the same as Russia systematically killing hundreds of innocent Ukrainian civilians in the same area. That clearly did not happen because if it did happen at this point, months later, irrefutable evidence could be presented to the public. Instead, Frontline PBS presented this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. All of my YouTube videos are automatically backed up on Rumble and Odyssey. I'm also on Telegram. I'm also back on Twitter for the time being. You can find the links to all of these in the video description below. Also in the video description are all of the links that I referenced in this video. Please check them out and see for yourself. I also have included ways you can help support my work. I do not monetize my YouTube videos. If you see an ad, please skip it because it's not helping me in any way. If you do want to support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee, through Patreon, and also through PayPal. And to everyone who has been helping out, even if you're just helping share my work with others, that's greatly appreciated. I could not do this work without that support. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.